Welcome back to JJN. This week, things are a little bit different because Jacob is very good at kicking things. That's right, Josh. So we're up here in Seattle and we're actually filming this in our hotel room. So uh, yeah, we've got a lot of fun stuff planned for not only this weekend, but for you guys as well. We have no fine art report this week, but next week we'll make sure all your fine art is, is a part of our amazing, beautiful, expanding collection. We will actually be showing you um, some different fine art this week that is that takes place in Seattle. So that's going to be really fun. Yeah, we'll show you guys all around and let you see what we're doing. So, But to uh, kick us off this week, before we get into any of that, um, to my mom with a story about a woman who accidentally got in the shoe shining business. Take it away. Hello, friends. To get started with our story today, we're actually going to do a little refresher. Um, as you know, if you've been following along, we've been going over the different fruits of the Spirit, um, which comes from Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23. It says, the Holy Spirit produces fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. And this month, we've been talking about goodness. The only true goodness we have is the goodness of God living in us. Having the gift of goodness means bringing glory to the true God of heaven by doing good for others and worshiping only him. God can depend on me to be honest, repent of my sins, and turn away from bad things. And this week, our story comes from Luke 7, beginning in verse 36 and going through verse 50. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. The woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited who he who had invited him saw this he said to himself if this man were a prophet he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is that she is a sinner jesus answered him simon i have something to tell you tell me teacher he said two people owe money to a certain money lender one owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. neither of them had the money to pay him back so he forgave the debts of both now, which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has forgiven little, loves little. Then Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. And so Jesus was invited by a Pharisee to dine with him and he went and there was this woman, they just call her sinner. She was known as a sinner in the city where she lived. She went to Christ with this alabaster jar of, of oil and she did what no one ever thought of doing. Um, in verse 38, it said, she stood at Jesus's feet behind him weeping and she began to wash his feet with her tears and wipe them with the hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragrant oil. While the Pharisee despised Jesus for allowing the woman to touch him, the Lord Jesus himself appreciated her actions. He saw the sincerity of her repentance. The Lord Jesus told the Pharisee Simon about how repentant the woman was in comparison to him and emphasized its importance. If you remember in verse 47, um, it said, therefore I say to you, her sins, which are many are forgiven for she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. 
So what can we learn from her? If we truly understood the significance of this account, we would all be brought to tears by and be humbled by the Lord's goodness. You see, this account teaches us more than just sacrifice and repentance. It teaches us love, forgiveness, and real freedom. Genuine repentance knows no limits. The woman who is sincere in her repentance from living a life of sin went as far as weeping behind Christ, washing his feet with her tears, wiping them with her hair, and anointing them with the very fragrant oil she herself sacrificed for this very purpose. Her actions show true repentance from her sins. Um, and number two, real repentance receives real forgiveness. The Lord Jesus, obviously happy at the woman's sincerity and repenting of her sin, spoke to his host about God's forgiveness. He told the Pharisee that though this woman was a sinner, her genuine repentance is received and is rewarded with complete pardon. <clears throat> Such is the wonderful truth that any and all of us show should know. Anyone who repents, regardless of history or background, can and will be forgiven by God, as long as the repentance is genuine. <clears throat> Even if the people around us won't believe in our repentance, God sees the real issue inside of our hearts. And number three, sincere repentance doesn't care about public opinions. Uh, we also need to take into account one very important thing. The woman did her act of repentance inside the house of a Pharisee. Pharisees are religious leaders known for their strict adherence to the law. This woman, a sinner as she is, will not be given any room in a Pharisee's house. Yet here she is, braving the people's rejection so she can come and repent before the Lord. The same holds true for anyone who truly repents. When we truly repent before the Lord, we will not worry about what people will think. We'll not worry that people think we are being ridiculous for crying in tears, for saying sorry, for making restitution of our sins. Regardless of what people may say, we turn our backs on sin and turn towards God. And that is our story for this week. Would you pray with me? God, I just thank you so much for your goodness in my life and the goodness that you show every single one of us. God, none of us are perfect. We all make mistakes, but you, um, you love us anyway. And uh, I just pray, Lord, that you would help each one who's listening to this today understand that all we need to do is come to you with a repentant heart and um, and give our lay our sins before you and ask you to forgive us and you you have done it um, you just love us so much so thank you for your love your forgiveness thank you so much for your goodness in Jesus name amen have a great week everyone thank you mrs. Hart for that awesome thrilling story about feet cleaning now remember folks on JJN we don't just tell the news we make you tell the news. So take a minute to pause the video and talk about what you just learned. In the meantime, we will be at my soccer game. That was a thrilling soccer game. I sure hope I won. Um, anyways, now it is time for a fine adventure. Report. Report. Simba.
wow, that was probably amazing. I sure hope we had a fun day tomorrow. Me too. But anyway, now onto a memory verse from my mom about our goodness. Hi. Um, today we're going to go over your Bible verse. Um, you guys have done it a couple times already. So we're just going to say it together a few times. at Psalms 23, 6. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23, 6. All right, let's say that again. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23, 6. All right. How about we say it together one more time? Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23, 6. All right, have a great day. Thank you, Mrs. Wallstrom, for that amazing memory verse, and I hope that you guys at home are rememorizing it. And unfortunately, our time this episode has come to a close. But don't forget to send in your artwork early so we can add it to our amazing, ever-expanding collection of your fine art. And do not forget to check out the website because there's some cool stuff on there. So see you guys next time. Hopefully not in a weird spot. We'll be back at the green screen at the church. At the green screen? At the... We will be back at our studio where we visit lots of random black and white horse races and and different scenery because we always are. Let's just end the episode. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>